Welcome to Let's Rap. So, t- this, today's show is a continuation from last week. So, of course, I'm Derek Carr, your host, and this is Ebony Ingram Jones, one of our co hosts, and Lisa Crutcher Thurman, our other co host. So, we are going to continue. If you didn't catch last week, then you can go back and watch it, but we'll give you a little history about what we talked about. So, Lisa uh, wrote an article that was featured in this magazine here in Louisville, and she gave us seven lessons that she has learned through a sickness that she had. And um, the first lesson was, um, She's learned never to always give people the benefit of the doubt. Second lesson was she's learned that addictions are real. And the third lesson was she learned that God will provide. So we're going to pick up right in the midst of it on lesson four. Um, And so, Lisa, you go ahead and go with that. Okay. For those who didn't hear before um, that I had brain injury, I still have a brain tumor. It's on the brain stem and I have a shunt in my head. And then shunt, like my doctor said, like anything mechanical could last for five days or 50 years. I'm on the 50 year plan this time. <laughs> so, it, and it has been what, I'm going to say at least 14 years yeah. now since I've had to have it, uh, my shunt revised. But the time for which I wrote this article was the third brain injury, which I was in a coma and uh, that was an experience uh, over a year. And it was so traumatic for me that, you know, and as you're working through it and get pretty much on the other side, you can look back and see some of the things that you've learned and how it's, even in the midst of tragedy, I was able to grow and become even a better person, I think. Yeah. So he shared the first three lessons. Well, lesson number four, it says, I learned that there are worse things in life than being overweight. Okay, stop. <laughs> Say that one more time for yep. the people in the back. Yep. There are worse things in life than being a little bit fluffy, mm-hmm. overweight. And, yeah. you, okay. and you know, this, I'm glad you said that because, you know, we joke and we laugh on here, but to me, this is serious because oh, it's serious. Um, there are so many people that do so many things to be a certain weight, mm-hmm. have a certain look. There's none, none of that. And when God loves us, he loves us for who mm-hmm. we are and for what we are. Now you should be healthy. Mm -hmm. You should do anything that's gonna help you to be healthy. But to chase a look, Mm -hmm. because you see it on TV, you don't know what these people went through. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they do and what kind of money they're spending to maintain the look that they have. Be your best self. Mm -hmm. Take care of you and be happy with the way God's blessed you. And then another thing, since this is less rap, and we talk about biblical principles and just everyday practical things. Stop looking down on people because they're heavy. Mm-hmm. I have, when I was younger, and you know, I don't want to offend nobody, but just like with my family, a lot of people in my family are overweight. Mm-hmm. They're heavy. And um, I've even been uh, in debt. You mm-hmm. know, I got up to 307 pounds. And then I just realized, you know, hey, I need to do something for me because I don't want what comes with that. I don't mm-hmm. want diabetes. I don't want all those things. Um, but in the black culture, it's horrible because we don't eat right. Mm-hmm. Right. We don't eat right. And we talk about a lot of times, all oh, that's passed down generation. No, no, no. What's passed down is bad eating habits. And that's what causes the hyper- hypertension. That's yes. what causes the diabetes. That's what causes those problems. You know, emphysema. All those things that we get that are because of what we put in our bodies. Mm-hmm. We have to remind ourselves that this is a temple. Mm-hmm. Yes. And before it crosses your lips, you know, will God be pleased with it? I mean, sometimes you just gotta be right, basic and right. ask yourself those kind of questions. Now, whatever you're going through, if you got a situation, your weight is what it is, if you're comfortable with yourself, be happy. Mm-hmm. It's all good, but don't look down on people. Mm-hmm. Don't make fun of people. Don't do that, mm-hmm. you know, cause I, I've seen people close to me and people that I love be hurt and be mm-hmm. wounded because somebody made fun of their weight size. And mm-hmm. it's not fair. Mm-hmm. It's not fair and it's not right because you, again, like we learned in the first, so you don't know what nobody's mm-hmm. going through. That's for sure. And you have to give people the benefit of the doubt. You mm-hmm. don't know why they're that size. You don't know, they could be addicted to food. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a comfort, you know, but don't do that. And I mm-hmm. took a little more time than I would, but I, that's important to it's me. It's important. Because it really that we really need to do that as people. And if we're really gonna live life at its best, and move forward to make better decisions and be just better people all around, don't make fun of somebody's situation because you don't know, you don't know where you might end up. Now, because so, yeah. I don't it's, talk about fat people anymore. Don't ever. do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. No, but and look, you saying that made me think of my cousin, Dana. Uh, she's my favorite cousin in the world. And we, this is shortly after I had gained all my weight and I still wasn't able to drive. I had to take the driver's evaluation over. So Dana and I were out, <coughs> excuse me, out shopping and we and this guy walked by he said, 
hey, uh, speak to everybody because mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I knew you or where I'm right. from or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, come find out I didn't. He said, yeah, but you look pretty good for a big girl. Oh. That was the first time I'd ever been called a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't. I was like, oh, my goodness. And Dana lost her mind. You don't know what she's been through. Mm -hmm. My cousin. And you know, I'm like, Dana. I'm like, it's okay. I am big. I mean, <laughs> let's right. just accept it. Right. I am. So... You don't know why somebody uh -huh. is the way they are. And I was telling you, by giving people the benefit of the doubt, I said, look at her, oh my goodness, mm. she got on that outfit. Well, my thing, she may have stayed all night at the cousin's house, you and that's all she had to put with. I'm you not sure why. No. You don't know. Yeah. And <laughs> Stay in your lane. That's it. Mind your business. That's it. I have really, really, really been focusing mm -hmm. on that, especially during the Lent season. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm positive. No negative, don't. I'm not interested because I'm yeah. coming back mm -hmm. with you with some positive because that's the way Jesus would have me mm -hmm. to be, I believe. And He keeps giving me different things to bless somebody, to say something to encourage you, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And because we got to keep each other lifted up yeah. with this world, it's already rough, and all it's going through. Yeah, I want to bring an element of seriousness. Okay, you said that, and at the beginning, I asked you to say it again for the people in the back. Mm -hmm. I'm the people in the back. Um, most of you all know me. Yeah. Um, I was small all my life. I had two babies and was 112 pounds. Wow. After having two <laughs> babies. <laughs> but we know as you get older, yeah. things change. Things change, yeah. baby. Things slow down. Yeah. Things drop yeah. a little lower. Yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> and don't respond to activity in the same right. way Absolutely. that they do. Absolutely. And as someone who has always been small, any pound that I gain, I am hyper aware of it. Yeah. And it will bother you. It if you if you don't check yourself, okay. it'll bother you. And we have to remember, like Derek said, yes, we should do whatever we can to make sure that we are healthy and that we feel our best because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Do not let those types of things define who you are that's it. or make you yep. hate yourself at the end of the night because it's not worth it. Because it's, it's vanity, first of all. But number one. It's vanity. Yeah. Well, we were talking about it in um, Weight Watchers. That big old fat arm and all that stuff, what, it still works. <laughs> okay? Then it's still doing what you needed to do. Hey, it is what it is. And I'm doing, you know, and that's the thing I say all the time. And my girlfriend's like, no, Lee, everybody's doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. We are. We're doing the best we can. Well, I'm not. And so I'm not. You are. For no. now, you're going to do better when you're In Jesus' able. name. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and claim it. And, and that's what you just have to tell yourself. You know, and then it's like we say in corporate America all the time. The low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Get what you can grab. Get what you can grab quickly. It's the low hanging fruit. So before you change, cut the tree down and do all these yeah. big things. Okay. Grab the low hanging fruit. So if you have a goal, start with small goals. Okay. okay. You know, you okay. know, I just today, the next week, I'm gonna eat better. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give up sweets. I'm going to stop eating bread. I'm going to do something. Do I'm, I'm going to yeah, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. stop frying chicken at 9 o'clock at night. That's, That's what, what I did last night. Do time. small okay. things right. to see what you do because, number one, we do know it is vanity. We get it. But as you get older, things do change. Mm -hmm. So you yes. have to change with the things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to be, when I was young, I could eat anything mm -hmm. and be fine. Absolutely. No, no, no. By the end of the meal... <laughs> Oh, Some is cutting off my circulation. <laughs> See the swollen. Oh, so wrong. Yeah. It changes. I mean, it really does change. Oh, I know. Her. So just to be your best, mm -hmm. you want to do better. And I know we took a little time on that, but that is so serious. It because is. It's serious. People, I mean, all these infomercials, you get all, everything is to help you lose weight. And we Everything's live in a crazy. society where you can get a, a BBL. You know, you can get a Brazilian butt lift. Yeah. Oh, you snap. can get the stuff sucked out from the middle and get it put in the back. Yeah. Yep. And we are constantly, especially if you're on social media, we see these images all day long. Yep. I see Meg the Stallion and I want to jump off the bridge because mm -hmm. she looks amazing, yep. you know. And all these other, you know, people who just mm -hmm. look a particular yep. way, it can mess with you and you got to stay centered. Hey, Absolutely. You, have better. you better. You better. And then you don't know what she's paying. So uh, we don't have her wallet. And so. now, <laughs> not only that, but I think the, the best part about what you were saying is you out here worrying about weight when other people have it so much worse. So much worse. Absolutely. So much worse.
So much worse. It, it, yeah. It's his truth. Mm -hmm. So Lisa, what was your lesson five? Lesson five was the lesson about to be shared. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're doing here today. Absolutely. And I said, because one of my best friends, Annie, through all, um, all of my illness and everything, she was right there. I mean, mm -hmm. she was at the hospital. She was, you know, helping my mama and doing all she could because, like I said, I couldn't be left by myself. So mm -hmm. she was staying all night and everything. Well, years later, her sister-in-law had a very similar brain mm -hmm. injury. And, you know, their doctors are talking to them and everything, and it's a lot of information, and it was, you know, really tragic right then. Well, they couldn't process it. Well, Annie would already heard a lot of that. She knew a lot of mm -hmm. what was going on, and that, that was all for her. Mm -hmm. So she was able to relay the information to her husband, and, you know, and the in-laws and everything. It was so helpful. And I was like, that's what it was for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You never know. Absolutely. You never know. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that because I'm going to take that a little deeper. So you do realize and you do realize and you realize that everything that you go through is not even for you. Absolutely. So let me go ahead and free you right now. <laughs> what you go through in life and a lot of situations and things that you face are not even for you. Mm -hmm. But your responsibility is to be a witness That's of it. those things, mm -hmm. especially when you come through them mm -hmm. and how you made it out of them because there's somebody right beside you in your house, in your family, somewhere with you that has gone through that experience. Mm -hmm. How many times has it happened? And you didn't went through something and it was the worst thing of your life. Mm -hmm. You came out of it. Then the next thing you know, somebody called you. Mm -hmm. and you say, well, I don't know something about that. Right. And then right. you start to talk and you start to tell them and you start to help them. So, number one, you are a witness yes. that God can bring anybody mm -hmm. through anything, mm -hmm. first yes. off. Then number two, with that witness, you have responsibility mm -hmm. because yes. he blessed you through it. So now Thank you need to tell somebody how you made it through it mm -hmm. and that you made it through it. Absolutely. Because that same power Say is still the same guy yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forevermore. <laughs> and he can bring you through right. that situation. So to me, that yeah. is why lessons are to mm -hmm. be shared yeah. and experiences are to be shared. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know who is going through what your struggle mm -hmm. is. Right. And if you don't share it, then you miss the opportunity to be a blessing Absolutely. to somebody. Absolutely. So. They call me back, Fraser Rehab, you know, to go talk to the ones that are there now. Because I remember sitting right there just looking and listening because they would have different ones. I'm like, so, I mean, I, I am going to, I have a chance. And, that, you know, and if I'm standing up there telling the people, I've been where you are. Mm -hmm. I sat there. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what helped me. Yeah. Of course, prayer is at the top. Absolutely. The Lord Jesus brought me through for a reason, mm -hmm. and I'm here to share with you. And that really, I count it all joy mm -hmm. to know that I can be a blessing to somebody. Absolutely. That's awesome. Okay, moving on. Number, lesson number six. That I learned that in life, I think I shared this with the other time, if it's something money can buy, you don't have a problem. Mm. Money comes, money goes. If it's something money can buy, <laughs> don't ever fret. <laughs> I, um, when I was, I said get my marbles back. When I was finally <laughs> trying to get it together, <laughs> Fraser Rehab had me to start catching the tarp. Because, mm. like I said, I had a brand new car. Camry. I had top of the line. Everything. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I had to start catching the tarp to get there. Well, I had to transfer buses. Mm. And as God is my with judge that first week every bus I got on and when I transferred there was somebody on there that I recognized mm -hmm. and I was able to sit and talk with them just that first week wow. and I said I went for well, it was another month and a half that I had to go but that first week both buses I saw somebody in my long term that I was wow. able to sit and talk with that after that, you know who that is. never <laughs> saw another person Divine intervention. It, was, it was and how my memory is now, I have no clue what I'm saying. <laughs> I got short-term <laughs> memory loss. Okay, where was I going with that? You were talking about the, oh, money can buy. Cause I was, well, I'm sitting, I sat down, and this guy, which I vaguely recognized him, he said he went to St. Stephen and everything, and I was like, oh, yeah, which I didn't have it all together, but he said he did. <laughs> so, um, and he said, and I was fussing, I said, and I got a brand new Toyota Camry. I can't even drive it, and I got to catch the bus. And he said, and he told me it was some money you can buy. He said, look at it. Look at my checkbook. He showed, He said, I'm on the bus because my car is at uh, what Cadillac place up on Broadway. Brown Brothers. Brown. Brown Brothers. He said, my car is at Brown Brothers getting service. So I'm just, uh, that's why I'm on the bus. Look at my checkbook. He showed me. I was like, ooh. 
Ooh, well, all right. He said, so he had plenty of money. He said, but his wife left him. Mm. Took the kids out of state. He don't know where they are. Wow. Ain't nothing all that money could do with it. Mm -hmm. He said, so don't you ever fret about money. And I, I took that to heart. And I trust God. And you, I pay my tithes. And I know I'm going to do my part. Absolutely. <laughs> he always you, does his. Yeah. It's on you. Yeah. I think Amen. Dr. King said that if you make the first step, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You Come just got to make Come that on. first step. Mm -hmm. And that's what faith is and faith in God. And tithing has changed my entire life. I know you I are. remember when I first got my first car and I said, God, if you bless me with this car, I'm going to start tithing. And nobody in my family tithed that I knew of, but my dad and my mom. They, he Every night, every Saturday, he did not play. You couldn't iron your clothes or nothing on Sunday. You had to do everything Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And I would see him. He deliberately did that to show us mm -hmm. his discipline and what God comes first. He would pay, write his check, fill out his tithe, do his thing. And we knew that he was paying his tithe. Mm -hmm. We knew it. He made sure that we knew it. And so I remember Pastor taught something. Um, this is when I was when I was young. I was belonged to another church before I came to St. Stephen. And I remember he said, in order to do something different, and in order to get something different, you got to do something different. Okay, okay. And so I said, God, from now on, I'm going to trust you. And I started tithing. And my life has not been the same. And it's amazing how, you know, I shared this before, how you pay your tithe. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's the last thing you have. And then somebody at work will say something like, okay, I got you today. Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, God, you play too. He do. You he are do. showing out today. Or somebody say, okay, we're going to take the whole group out to lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. and you just like, okay. So he got me. Oh, so he got you, you. You trust him. And like you said, that lesson is important because if money can buy it, it, you don't have to fret. You don't have to worry about anything. Got the, he's got the rest. A thousand years, yes. He will see that you have and some things you don't really need. Yeah, but he takes care of the mm -hmm. needs. That's what yeah. I love about right. him. You may use some things you, you want right. that you right. don't need to have, but right. he'll take care of those needs. Mm -hmm. And that's where the trust comes in. Absolutely. And he is Jehovah Jireh. Yes, yes. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. And we thank God for that. Uh, Moving on to lesson seven. Lesson seven. Okay, I learned to seize the moment and to live life to the fullest. Because mm -hmm. you never know, life is short. It is. And somebody run across my mind, I'm calling you right now. Because you don't never know Absolutely. the worst thing mm -hmm. you can do. Where they is, came from, now, right. Yeah, right. what, I ain't thought about us. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But you give them a call, and you never know how they might uh, bring up their spirits. Mm -hmm. And I've had people tell, oh my goodness, I was going to call it, I didn't, and now mm -hmm. she's gone. So you just, life's too short. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you gotta make it happen. Yep. So the live life to the fullest part. So something about my personality, I'm not in many ways a risk taker. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't like risk. I'm definitely a bird in a hand is worth more than two in the bush <laughs> okay, kind of person. Okay. Okay. So I'm not out here just launching out real strong about a lot of things. Right. But when you say seize the moment, what are some things or like some challenges or some experiences that you want to have before you leave this earth? What are some things that you'd say you want to do? Well, God's been risking? putting it on my heart now that I'm retired and I love, 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 love substitute teaching. Really? That is the easiest money in the world. <laughs> I'm talking, go in, and a lot of the teachers, they don't know if a teacher's coming or somebody who had a degree in basketball. Correct, correct, correct. So they usually leave them some work that they can do, and I only do high school. Uh huh. Yeah, because elementary, you got to walk them here and put them out. Now I ain't buttoning up no pants, I ain't blowing, uh uh, no, none of that. So, and I've learned so much with the high school students, but i am been getting the feeling that God wants me to do more. Mm something okay. else that and which I feel like I which I know I do impact some of the students that I'm with mm -hmm. but up until now I'm like no no long-term positions because they do what regular teachers do great <laughs> papers talk to parents I don't want to do that no more <laughs> so and I don't want a permanent school because yeah. I'm here sometime I might want to be out Dixie mm -hmm. Highway so I can run over and see them or I might want to be so I'm just but I've been getting a feeling that God wants me to do something different. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm open okay. and willing. That's cool. But um, as far as you say, taking the risk or whatever, uh, I've been that way. And then after brain injury, <laughs> Kuna Matata. Yeah. I mean, whatever's going to happen, going to happen. <laughs> I would, the, when I went on the 
first serious date with my husband, because I've been known him since I was nine. But mm. after that date, I wrote him a letter. You shall be my husband. Oh. <laughs> told him. You shall live you with that. You shall. That's my husband. That's what I told him. And, and my, my husband told you, there ain't no courage nowhere. Yeah. Everything is lined up. He's a planner. He, everything, ducks got to be in a row. And we dated for two years, then was engaged for a whole nother year before we actually got married. But I told him. <laughs> and he knows that because you got it what you got to lose right I mean some things you really gotta just step out on faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when you know that you know because God will put it in your heart mm -hmm. pray over it then make it happen and one thing that I wanted to add with that and it seized the moment is is something you said in the last season and talked about how it's arrogant to think that you have more time to do yep. what Correct. God has asked you Ooh, to do or something that, that you me. know mm -hmm. that is on your heart. Mm -hmm. And um, I know as Christians, a lot of time we procrastinate. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if we haven't learned anything else through this pandemic, the state of the world and things that have happened, people fighting for this vaccination now, mm -hmm. the insurrection, the injustices, mm -hmm. the yeah, inequalities yeah. that yeah. we face as black people that we've always faced, we don't have no time mm -hmm. to waste None. over foolishness. Mm -hmm. So if God has called you to do something, Correct. or if you know something in your heart, or you know something you're supposed to be doing, come on, do come it. On. Mm -hmm. Do it. Don't be arrogant and think that you have plenty of time because you, you don't, don't know. know. And even if you live 100 years, it's still a short period. Mm -hmm. You know, that's nothing, you know, compared vapor. to it's a, we are nothing but a vapor. Mm -hmm. That's it. And uh, life is fleeting mm -hmm. and it moves and uh, it moves on when you go. <laughs> now. And uh, one thing that I've learned all through this pandemic and it's something interesting that you said. You said it's something. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I want to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to be known for what I said or what I did mm -hmm. to help somebody along the way. Mm -hmm. And I have learned through this show, the radio show, the show mm -hmm. that I'm able to do at work, okay. um, all the opportunities that I've been afforded to speak to people. That is a passion that I didn't even know I had. Wow. And um, now that it has come to fruition, in these different platforms mm -hmm. now that's what i want to do mm -hmm. i want to be the person that leaves a legacy of hope okay mm -hmm. um faith mm -hmm. and just for someone to do better than they've done mm -hmm. to lift somebody's spirit Absolutely. um in whatever way that that means but that's what i want to do i feel i believe that's my calling mm -hmm. right. uh to a degree and just to help people god has always blessed me with excellent oratory skills mm -hmm. and being able to speak to people and pray for people being and just being relatable to, to people mm -hmm. and he's just always done that for me and it always comes so easy mm -hmm. so I would just say whatever your gift is and whatever God has blessed you with don't wait to put that to work mm -hmm. put it to work and then when you can put it to work for the kingdom yes. now, then you're really doing what God wants yeah, you to do yeah. so that that's what I want I want to leave a legacy mm -hmm. and I want to be a blessing to somebody before you know, my, my number's called mm -hmm. before my ticket is signed. Yeah. That's what I want. That's that's what I want. And I want to, this is what this is about. These mm -hmm. conversations is to make us better, not just to look good on camera or, mm -hmm. you know, hey, these are really for us to do mm -hmm. something Absolutely. to bless somebody. And I get blessed every week, mm -hmm. every time that we talk, yes. every time that we speak, I learn something and uh, it's through conversations. Mm -hmm. And so this, this. Thank you for sharing this. Mm -hmm. um, this lesson it. has been very, very grateful to us, and it's and it's timeless. Mm -hmm. You know, you wrote this years ago, but years. it's still mm -hmm. still prevalent yeah. these days, mm -hmm. and it's something that won't go away. So, thank you for sharing Glad your experiences. Yes, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, last out for me. No, I just like you said. I um, before we even taped the first show, when I was reviewing this, mm -hmm. I told Derek, I was like, "This was so sweet. Yeah. It really yeah. resonated with me because, like you said, it was very practical, mm -hmm. but it was just just real. It yeah. really was. You you want if you just publish the first sentence of each of these, <laughs> right. that could really help somebody. Yeah. So putting things because it's all about putting things in perspective okay. and that is what these seven lessons have done Absolutely. for me from number one to number seven mm -hmm. they are amazing yep. and they 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 challenge you seize the moment yes, yes. stop being so vain uh -huh. and think about other people and what they may be going through compared oh, yeah. to you worried about 
if you got to wear a girdle or not. Right. Um, think about how the Lord has preserved you to do a thing yes, yes. that only you could do or something that you really wanted to do. Um, you just, it's just chock full of just some very good things to keep somebody going. So I yes. thank you. I thank you for I'm sharing. So it's a blessing. That is a blessing to mm -hmm. me. Because like I said, I wrote it because they was, had been on my heart and I had started something because I was going to write this book mm -hmm. on I got my marbles back. That was going to be the title. Because I was a whack job. I mean, just, <laughs> they couldn't leave me by myself, nothing. And I did all kind of stuff, not knowing. Mm -hmm. So that's how the brain works. But I know I had people praying for me, mm -hmm. and that meant the world to me. Mm -hmm. And that's why now, um, for the choir and everything, I'm the one to go visit people. Because I know what it's like to be in that Absolutely. bed. Absolutely. And have somebody come send out cards. Because... Mm -hmm. Somebody's thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can these days. Ooh so thank you, Lord. I praise him. I forever give him the glory mm -hmm. and the honor and share my story because it just might bless somebody. Mm -hmm. So I don't do this a lot, but I'm going to do it now because God has blessed me and I am the host of this show. Uh, and you all are my co-hosts. I'm going to challenge you to do just what you said. So with the time that you have extra now, God has blessed you through your career and yes. you've retired your substitute teaching, whatever, but in your spare time, I challenge you to write that book. Because mm -hmm. I think it's a good right. idea, and yeah. I believe when you just said that something sparked and that whole thing, and I could see the whole thing playing out. And if you just built on these principles, mm -hmm. you already got something. So I challenge you right now. <laughs> I didn't believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I challenge you right now. How I got my marbles back this day, mm -hmm. When Lisa Crutcher Thurman writes it, it will be a blessing yes, to somebody. Will. Mm -hmm. God will bless it. He will send all, and you are going to be blessed financially through it. Wow. And you're going to bless wow. other people. Mm -hmm. So I wow. challenge you to write that book. I'll buy it. Okay. I would. I would, definitely. <laughs> okay. Because it's, and you don't have to go deep. It can mm -hmm. be practical conversations just like we talking mm -hmm. here. But I'm telling you, just like these principles helped us. This mm -hmm. will help somebody else. Mm -hmm. And you know, God don't bless us to keep it to no, ourselves. He's no, never taught true. us to that's be true. stingy. We have to share. It's in one of your lessons. Share your experience. Yes. Share that. Because that's going to bless somebody mm -hmm. else. And we'll write the foreword. We will. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> okay. I'm going to need something because <laughs> right. I did say it. Okay. <laughs> you did so, say it. But yeah, I, I mean, okay. just as you spoke that, I mean, and, I, and that, and it's another thing. You know, I said I live want a legacy I want to do that I also I want to be able to speak change into people mm -hmm. for a positive benefit yes. mm -hmm. for them to make them to tell them what they can do and that's what I want to do when this pandemic is over and we get to re re be back together mm -hmm. and we can you know socialize and be back in church be I want to be an encourager mm -hmm. yes that's what I that's my goal I'm going to be intentional about encouraging people to be them their best selves. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's I, I like had that. nothing else to it. That's what I want to strive to do. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever I got to do to get there, and I know God's going to continue to afford Correct. me platforms like this yeah. and opportunities, but that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's preaching, teaching, singing, mm -hmm. praying, I don't okay. know what it is. Whatever okay. form that comes in, I want to encourage God's people. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's it. That's what I want to do. I like that. Mm -hmm. So we are at our end of our time. And I think cannot thank God enough for thank these lovely Lord. ladies thank and you, Lisa's Lord. experiences and Ebony shared experiences as well. Um, I don't know, but this show is getting better and better. Yes, it is. And if you thank all don't you, like it, I'm sorry. I don't know, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> and I appreciate it. I want you to like it, right. but if you don't, you know, everything ain't for everybody. No, but come on so, back. No, but come, come on keep back. Coming back. You, you might not like this topic. Yeah, right. like on special guest. There you go. There you go. Write <laughs> us. Let us know. We'll get you on here. But yeah, but our goal is to just be a blessing to everybody yes. in a practical way and just show that God is amazing. Mm -hmm. And he yes. is. So let us have a word of prayer. God, thank you for this day. Thank, thank, you, thank you for practical lessons. And God, thank you that we don't have to be so deep to know you. Mm -hmm. And God, we can call on you anytime we get ready. And we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to speak to you through prayer. Mm -hmm. So God, fix our lives that we will continue to take practical lessons mm -hmm. like this, like today, shared experiences. Yes. You know, God, just 
knowing that we don't have to be vain, knowing mm -hmm. that you will bless us through oh, whatever yes. situation. Then God teach us to seize the moment and mm -hmm. not be arrogant and think that we have plenty of time to do your work and do what you've called us to do. Mm -hmm. So God bless us to just be better Christians, better mm -hmm. servants, better people, yes, God. God. Teach us how to love one another yes. like you loved us, mm -hmm. God. And God, just thank you for being God and thank you for being good. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you and we, got, we thank you for your guidance and for your keeping power. Bless these two lovely ladies and myself. Continue to bless this show and our church and our pastor. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray and it's all these things this day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. That is a wrap. We yes, appreciate you for joining us. Okay. Join us again next week. Same time. All right.